Without bearing prejudice about style or school of harp playing, certain technical endeavors seem to be more strenuous to some muscles than others. Playing ascending scales with the right forearm resting on the sounding board requires less flexor and extensor activity than playing with the forearm off the board. When the arm is moved upward, there is less deltoid and flexor activity than when it is moved outward. The explanation for the title, you might find it a little bit puzzling, uh, the title of uh, New Hearts, that's self-explanatory because that's what we're dealing with today, are new instruments that have just appeared on the, on the market and in the harp world, we're trying to present to you. And also young harpists, this is probably the most puzzling part, and maybe I've made a mistake in my, uh, making this remark. What I had in mind when I first thought is because the, the theme of the Congress was the youth, so I thought I could make a connection in there. But on second thought, I think it's a mistake because everyone that's here is a young harpist at heart, I think. Uh, for the simple fact that we are here, we are interested, and therefore our attitude is of a young harpist. So I would like to qualify that. that uh, I'm not just talking to the very young harpist that's starting a career now, but to everyone. I myself consider myself a young harpist at heart, so I don't look very young, but uh, I do consider myself young. <laughs> so uh, that is a little bit of the explanation of the title. And then an important relationship, I don't think one can elaborate very much on that. We all agree that our relationship of harpists and manufacturers is extremely important. Uh, for the future of, of what we do. Frau Kaus sagte also, dass äh, es zwei Programme heißt, die junge Hafen, junge Hafen ist die neue Hafen. Und das aber im Grunde genommen schon die Tatsache, dass wir alle hier sind, beweist, dass wir doch zumindest zum Herzen alle junge Hafenisten sind. Und deshalb meint, er meinte also, dass er das auch wohl einen Fehler gemacht hätte. Ähm, er sagt außerdem, dass die Beziehung zwischen Hafenist und Hafenhersteller doch unglaublich, unglaublich wichtig ist und dass aus diesem Grund schon äh, diese Präsentation sehr wichtig sei. On the outset, it seems that we sometimes have different um, objectives in mind. By, that, by we, I mean harpists on one side and manufacturers on the other. Uh, the manufacturers, of course, are interested in building the good instruments that they can sell, but they're interested in selling the product. We are, most, all of us, artists and want a very good instrument. Uh, we're concerned also with practical things, 
such as the quality, of course, but also the price. And uh, so sometimes it seems that we are not quite at sync, uh, that we don't have the same objectives in hand. Of course we do, in the long run, we do have the same objectives. Manchmal scheint es, scheint es zu sein, dass, dass wir dass der Hafen, der Hersteller und der Hafen dass sie doch nicht die gleichen Dinge, äh, auf gleiche Dinge ausgerichtet sind. Aber der Hafenhersteller ist natürlich erstmal daran interessiert, äh, gute Instrumente zu bauen und diese dann auch zu verkaufen. Und der Hafen ist, interessiert sich zwar auch natürlich sehr für gute Instrumente, aber ist auch gleichzeitig am Preis interessiert. Und deshalb sieht es manchmal so aus, als würden wir nicht eingleisig fahren. Aber das, wie Herr Vergau sagt, ist doch nicht ganz der Fall. We do because, in my view, we, we are a family, a very large and extended family. But what we're interested in, eventually, is the position of the instrument in the harp world, in producing music, making beautiful music, and having instruments that respond to that. The manufacturers are interested in that, obviously, and so are we. Uh, by we, I mean all the harpists present. And uh, so therefore, in the long run, down the road, we're all talking about the same thing. And uh, so that's, in a way, what we all here doing today. But we have also history to look at. I think uh, uh, Rosalind Wrench yesterday mentioned very well uh, the great partnership, um, not, not a straight partnership, but in terms of in, nine, in 1810, there was great development, a great change in the, in the instrument. Uh, which was the invention of the, the double action pedal harp by Erard. And it took a few decades, in fact, for that instrument to, to be popular and become popular. The harpists did not suddenly become uh, interested in that instrument or they suddenly used it. However, there were some great harpists that were interested in the instrument, namely Parish Alvars. They, they changed the repertoire, they expanded the repertoire and they used the new instruments. So this relationship, which is actually my, my point, my main point today, is extremely important that we uh, have always a dialogue and a position of support between what the manufacturers are bringing out and, uh, and what actually what the harpists are doing with the instruments. Wie Dr. Ross, Ross Ranch gestern schon sagte, gab es um 1810 den ersten großen Einschnitt in der Hafengeschichte durch die Entwicklung der Doppelpedalhafen. Und es gab damals Leute wie Parish Alvarez, die eben mit ERA sehr eng zusammengearbeitet haben. Und im Grunde genommen stehen wir heute wieder vor äh, dem gleichen Problem. Und die Geschichte müsste uns eigentlich zeigen, wie wichtig es ist, ein gutes Verhältnis zu den Hafenbauern zu haben. But of course, what we're doing today is actually talking about the future. The future not down the road, but the future that happens now. Uh, this always happens in history. We, we have what we grew up with. On the other hand, almost at the same time, something else comes along, along the road. So we're dealing almost in two areas, in two places. We have what we started with, and then we have the future right here. Uh, of course, we can never predict what's going to be used in 20 years, and I think it's silly to think about that. I think what we have to deal with is what is already here, and try this way to work together and to support each other. Uh, wo wir uns noch, natürlich heute besonders mit befassen möchten, ist die Zukunft und die Zukunft, die eigentlich schon eingetreten ist mit den neuen Instrumenten, das da drüben steht. Man kann natürlich nie voraussagen, was in 20 oder 30 Jahren noch gespielt wird und was da passieren wird, aber wir müssen uns zunächst mal mit dem auseinandersetzen, was wir heute hier haben. One of the great revolutions now in our society, of course, is electronics. We are really flooded, we are inundated by uh, what computers and anything electronic can do in our lives. And this affects, of course, the arts. The arts are being transformed, the instruments are being transformed, new instruments are being created, which I think is what's also important. And um, so therefore, this in a way is what actually you're going to hear today and you're going to see today. A lot of the things, the new things that are you're going to hear are really the result of the new technological adaptations from other areas of technology into the instruments. 
this so of course has been happening in a lot of other instruments, namely the guitars and the court and the flutes, um, other instruments I certainly can't remember. <laughs> they all have the aspect of amplification as well as transforming, creating new instruments. Was as was natürlich sehr beeinflusst heute auch die Musik oder die Kunst, ist die neue Technologie der Elektronik. Und wir haben das ja bereits gesehen in anderen Instrumenten, wie zum Beispiel der elektronischen Gitarre, elektronischen Klavieren und so weiter. Und das schlägt sich eben auch jetzt bei uns wieder mit unserem Instrument. Um, I very briefly now would like to refer to the harp that's not here. Um, this is a harp that um, uh, has been around in some form or another for about four years, um, and um, it um, incorporates at least two very different, um, two revolutionary concepts. One was uh, the use of hydraulic mechanism, and the other one, of course, is the use of the computers connected with the use of pedals. Um, the whole concept is rather revolutionary. Um, I'm not going to attempt to explain it to you because it wouldn't serve any purpose without the instrument present. However, I would like to refer to you that there has been two articles being written about this car that appeared in uh, musical journal journals in America. Ganz kurz möchte ich nur auf die Harfe eingehen, die heute nicht hier ist. Da hat sich ja schon eine, eine starke Entwicklung gezeigt, einmal mit dem hydraulischen Mechanismus und dann mit dem äh, computergesteuerten Mechanismus. Das Mechanismus. ist zwar heute nicht hier, deshalb können wir noch nicht weiter darauf eingehen und sie nicht weiter erklären, aber es gibt in verschiedenen amerikanischen Journalen Berichte darüber und Herr Fakau wird Ihnen jetzt sagen, welche das sind. One of them was the, the String Music Teachers Association of America. Um, it appeared already in the fall, uh, in the autumn of uh, 1986. And the other one is in the American Harp Journal uh, that appeared recently, about a month ago. The, the article on the American Harp Journal is, uh, the layout is very well done. It has pictures and then diagrams explaining more or less how the, the instrument is used. So I urge a lot of people that would be interested really in knowing this to, to read the article. Of course, I'm doing a little bit of self-advertising because the article was written by me and a friend of mine from England. You must excuse me, then. but the only articles... Uh, there has been several articles before, uh, one in the in the World Harp Congress uh, Review, uh, and also in the, um, in the English uh, Harp Association article. So there has been notices about this, but these are the more recent ones, and especially this article has the diagrams and the explanation of how the instrument is used. The other author of the article is David Dunn, an English uh, you know, the harpist who was not able to be here. So um, I would like to, to refer that to you, and also, I will not be able to say much more about the harp, but uh, Mr. Joel Garnier, the inventor of the instrument that's here, he's uh, standing back there in the blue suit and the uh, red tie. Uh, he tomorrow has, during the exhibitor's time, the opportunity to answer some of your questions and explain to you what the instrument does, as well as some other concepts that he's working on. Uh, on, on other instruments. So I urge you to go to him and really ask him things about these harps and uh, make him explain to you what he's doing because this is why we're here. The two articles that Herr Bakau ansprach, were one of the articles in the American Journal of 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 the American Journal Der andere ist erschienen im Journal der äh, amerikanischen Streicher. Ähm, beide Artikel sind also sehr interessant und erklären das Instrument sehr deutlich. Und der Erfinder des Instruments steht dort drüben im dunklen Anzug mit roten Binde und ist also morgen während der Ausstellung bereit, Ihre Fragen zu beantworten. Falls Sie also spezielle Fragen haben, wenden Sie sich bitte an den Herrn dorthin.
just now would like to, to end this very brief talk and give the time to the, the demonstration, which is really what we are here for, is to hear what the instruments can do. Um, by saying that, as I mentioned before, we're really a family, and like in all families, uh, we, we need to have, we need to talk to each other, we need to respect each other, we need to consult each other. Uh, there's a lot to be learned from either side as to what the harpists want from the instruments. And uh, on the other hand, we should listen to what the manufacturers have to say and what they can do and what the instrument can do. Uh, so uh, talking and understanding is really extremely important in all of these things and exchange. Uh, I feel sometimes that we need to have much more of that. Um, and this is really the right forum for it when we're all together from so many, many different countries, so many different types of manufacturers. So I really would like to urge you tomorrow and the day after when you have the meetings with the manufacturers to really ask them questions such as what are you really doing for us uh, and also explain them. And I think they want to hear, they need to hear what we'd like to have. And vice versa, we must listen to what they can offer to us because um, it is the only way that we can work. Uh, we're all interested in having the best and most modern instruments that exist. We have as harpists to, um, to be on the forefront, on the avant-garde of the music world. We need to build respect with, with the musical community, the high standards, as well as being as modern as we can. As you all know, nowadays a harpist has to have multiple activities in most cases. No longer people are just confined to the two old activities of being a teacher or a, a player in an orchestra. We have many, many different activities that we can broaden ourselves and go into. And in order to do so, we need the old instruments, we need the new instruments, we need the instruments of the future that are already here with us. And uh, this is really um, what we are all here for, I think. It's a wonderful gathering of people uh, in, in Vienna in 1987. And now I would like to, to pass the rest of the session to the Selby uh, demonstration and uh, to, to, to show you what the Selby Park is doing these days. Thank you very much. What it is, in fact, is a solid-bodied electric harp, which has a microphone pickup under every string, and the treble central or bass registers can be controlled individually or by using all three registers at the same time. 
The strings used, of course, are the normal gut and wire strings. <coughs> of course, nylon strings can also be used, but that gives a completely different sound altogether. The harp also has a thick soundboard, so in other words, thicker than the normal one, in order to deaden the vibrations of the instrument so that the electronics can produce the quality of sound without the feedback caused by the natural vibrations of the traditional acoustical harp. In other words, the sound the electric harp is a completely self-contained unit and can be made to perform exactly as the harp is desired, yet still retain the performer's freedom for natural expression. In other words, the harp doesn't take you over, you are still in control of it. What is most necessary, of course, is the use of high-quality equipment. Now, we've explained everything in this program. I do hope you've all got one, so if you haven't, please ask for it later on. No, I'm sorry, afterwards. Not in, I'm going to interrupt the whole thing. Sorry. What we are going to demonstrate for you now are three highly individual and different pieces which illustrate the various facets and possibilities of the Salve Electric Home. Firstly, our harp is from England, a group in Parker. <laughs> Rupert is going to play for you the well-known piece, Plasakaya by Han. He will play this piece the way you know it and love it, I hope, or probably hate it in the case, however you've learned it. And then with a few special effects, he will play it the way you have never heard it before. Then secondly, we have a new piece entitled Fabler by Pete Stollery. There's Pete over there, our engineer of the day. <laughs> Pete has composed this contemporary piece of music especially for this Third World Harp Congress and especially for the electric harp, the Salve electric harp. This piece uses orthodox harp techniques alongside more 20th century sounds, such as the usual hitting the soundboard, slapping the strings, and making the strings vibrate. And then last of all, the third piece of the program, Rupert will play, and it is called Verne's Consequence, again a piece he composed especially for this harp congress. Verne's Consequence is an electro-rock piece which demonstrates the great possibilities of the electric harp in this new generation of amplified music. It has been written to show how the beauty of the harp can cut through a large backdrop of sound, in this case several synthesizers and a drum machine, yet it still comes out sounding like a harp. That is very important, the point we want to make over to all of you, that this is a harp, not a, an electronic instrument. It is in two parts the piece of music we are, he is going to play. One is gentle and flowing and the other is more abrasive and in keeping with what we call today's modern rock sound. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy it. All that is left for me now to do is to introduce you yet again to Peter and to Rupert and ask you to sit back, loosen your belts and wait for the sound of the electric car to take off. Afterwards, I will ask the lady to translate in German, but we would rather you hear some music now instead of more talking. So please enjoy it, and I hope you're happy.
sorry about that. I said, I think you'll all agree with me that that was, of course, very different and absolutely wonderful. Also, I hope you'll realize from this demonstration that, of course, the Salvi Heart Company very much is a forward-looking company that looks to the future of the heart, spending much time and money on research. Our electric hub is the result of such research. Soon there will be the option to take this instrument one step further by combining it with equipment which will transfer analog sound into digital sound through the use of MIDI equipment. All this is still, of course, very much in the future. MIDI equipment, if anybody doesn't know, and that includes me, is the medium for transmitting information from one instrument to another. For example, you can make a harp play a synthesizer, that sort of thing. So anybody who doesn't understand what's going on, certainly from the English point of view, because we will have Uli in a minute translating for the German, um, we would like to invite you to come round to our stand. Everything you see here will be set up from about 12 o'clock onwards, and please do come and try. You're welcome to give all kinds of... No, because I think we'll be holding up the next... Um, party and also I know that Uli would like to do a little translating because I think some of you have not perhaps understood everything that we have said today here. Uh, I would also like to introduce to you Uli Brinksmeyer who was a student of Susanna McDonald, McDonald in Indiana and I believe is now uh, working on her doctorate and in a way she is also part of the Salvi family because for a while she worked for us in Santa Monica when we were there. So Uli would now translate what we've said for people who can understand the German. And I hope you all come and see us later on in the Salvi room. Bye-bye.